Just recently a new Terminator game arrived on the scene called Terminator Resistance for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC. Produced by Polish game developer Taon, they have been around since 2006. They had tackled another 80s action film license before with Rambo the video game for the last generation of consoles. That game wasn't received very well and was a big disappointment for the fans of Rambo. With the announcement of this new game earlier this year, I think many gamers were a bit concerned about its overall qualities come its release. Now the Terminator franchise has done okay with video games over the years. The 16-bit titles I played a lot, like the Terminator on the Mega Drive and later on the superb Mega CD version. Terminator 2 had conversions to pretty much every home computer and console at the time. T2 the arcade game was the most fondly remembered version associated with that film, which did fairly well on the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive, and there was a standard platformer game released at the same time which was quite frankly awful. There were some decent games for the PC with Terminator 2029 and the first game to tag with the first person genre with Future Shock. T3 Rise of the Machines had a game produced for the PS2 and Xbox, and yet again it was another failed tie-in, but there was another title based around the film that was received positively called T3 Redemption. And now finally with the fourth film in the series, Terminator Salvation, there was an arcade game that you can probably find at every bowling alley around the country or the last surviving arcade near the beach. The console game for the 360 and PS3, though not terrible, was incredibly short and gamers felt ripped off after spending £40 plus on it, only to complete it in less than 4 hours. So here we are with a new game for the current generation of consoles, and is it any good? Well, early reviews seem to lean on the negative side, with IGN rewarding it 4 out of 10. Not a good sign. I knew going into this game that it wouldn't blow my socks off or reinvent the wheel for the first person genre. I am a bit of a sucker for movie licensed games, I do enjoy most of them and there hasn't been a big licensed game such as this for a number of years. Most games based on the latest movie release is put out on a mobile game which I have no interest in playing. So did I enjoy this game? Yes I did. I had a blast playing it and being a fan of the Terminator franchise, in particular Terminator 1 and 2, I was satisfied to a large extent by the gameplay and story. What it captures very well is the visual design of the future that we saw in T1 and 2 and T2 3D. It's not the future war we saw in Salvation and more recently Dark Fate. It's all about that visual nightmare that James Cameron created and being able to walk around that world and get attacked by hunter killers and terminators and defending yourself with plasma guns was a lot of fun. Now the game isn't perfect and there are a few issues with it which I'll discuss later in the video. As the game is only single player it focuses around a new character called Jacob Rivers who we are introduced to right at the start of the game. Jacob becomes the sole survivor of his resistance unit and is assisted by a man who doesn't reveal his identity. He leads Jacob out of the war zone and with his escape he makes an alliance with a small group of survivors composed of Jennifer, her surrogate brother Patrick, an elderly man called Ryan, a scavenger called Colin and a hospital nurse called Erin. Jacob needs to get in touch with his commanding officer and meets with Commander Baron. She's unsure of Jacob and his backstory and his sighting of a new Terminator called the Infiltrator. She takes him back to her base and gives him orders to gather more intel and complete additional missions for her unit to cripple Skynet to bring it offline to save the last hope of humanity. As Jacob goes to complete his missions, he is being pursued by the Infiltrator. With the gameplay, it does ultimately feel like a first-person shooter from 10 years ago. It would fit right at home on an Xbox 360. It lacks the speed and polished graphics of, say, the latest Modern Warfare. It's apparently Xbox One X enhanced, but I don't really see much of an upgrade on a graphical level for it to appear in true 4K. But it does employ some nice lighting effects, especially during the nighttime sequences. Though the gameplay and performance feel slightly dated, it does employ elements from contemporary games, such as Fallout 4 as you unpick locks in a very similar way. You can pick up items to trade and sell and craft items that you need in battle, such as ammunition. You can also level up Jacob so he can hack and unlock things more easily, and the usual upgrades such as strength and how much you can hold, etc. There are so many items laying around to be traded and crafted, it just becomes a bit unrealistic on how much stuff you can hold, but video games are always like that. You can carry four guns at once, which is quite refreshing. It's like the old days of Doom and Duke Nukem, because we are often just limited now to two guns, and that's it, and you have to manage what you can take on. 
the game has you interact with many other characters throughout to gain their confidence in you. That will determine the ending of the game. There are multiple choice questions you can ask people to expand on their backstory or complete side missions for them such as collect mementos and tools they need. The conversations can be a tad too long, some of their backstories are quite interesting and others are a bit bland so you find yourself just saying, skip to the end. The plot to the game does raise some interesting ideas with some of the characters mentioning that people worked for Skynet to gain their freedom from the AI. Clearly demonstrating people can be easily manipulated if promised if they will survive or gain something of value to them. The survivors talk about Skynet treating them well as they do tests on them, which they are obviously doing to find weaknesses in the human body, and then Skynet starts torturing people and killing those captured. You stumble into a hospital and you're surrounded by bodies in bags. You have this tense music in the background and it all works putting you on edge. There was a person lying dead in a chair and it's clearly Robert Patrick. A nice little easter egg for fans of the T-1000. Going back to the graphics, the character animation in the cutscenes lack any real realistic movement. They appear stilted and like Thunderbird puppets. There are moments when they show some real emotion, but those are few and far between. There appears to be an issue with the sound when it comes to playing the dialogue. The audio pops and crackles, it's like the audio doesn't subtly fade in and there is balancing issues. If you play the game through surround sound, one level has you escaping with Baron and her voice comes through really loud and peaks a lot. Hopefully they will patch the audio bug in future or this may be an issue with the Xbox One version. The game isn't a huge file to install thankfully, just clocking in at around 18 gigabytes. I did think at first, oh no, this is going to be a short game, but to my surprise it took maybe 8 to 10 hours to complete which is a suitable length for a game such as this. Other little nitpicks is the AI. The Terminators can often get stuck and look the wrong way, making it sometimes quite easy to take most of them down. They aren't the brightest bunch you face up against. You can easily get away from them and just hide until they lose sight of you. So it's not really a difficult game on the normal setting, so maybe playing it on hard will give you more of a satisfying challenge. Once the game started, I wasn't fully invested in the story until I encountered the Infiltrator by Chapter 4, I believe which is the new Terminator they have developed with living tissue. Then the story begins to unfold and you discover Skynet are developing the time machine, so it does a good job at filling in the blanks of what transpired in the small flashback scenes of Terminator 1 and the opening sequence of T2. So the writers have done a good job of fleshing out that story and have it all make sense by the end, especially when you are dealing with time travel events that haven't transpired yet to follow the path of the first two films. The music in the game is fantastic. It uses Brad Fidel's themes but doesn't just copy and paste material from those scores. The composer on this game has provided new material which blend wonderfully with Brad's original music. Honestly, it's the best Terminator score since T2. The other feature films have all really failed at capturing the essence and approach Brad Fidel did for those movies and this game just nails it. Hopefully they will put out a soundtrack release in future. The sound effects in the game are taken directly from the movies. The plasma gun sounds are spot on. So combining that with the music and the visual style of this future war, it throws you straight into the movies and that's its strongest asset. One moment that made me geek out was seeing Skynet. It's the pyramid design from T2 3D. I was so happy to see that. The game retails on consoles for £50 in UK shops. I grabbed it online for £40 and even at that price I don't think it's justified. For PC users on Steam, it's just under £25, which is a digital copy, so I know the cost of manufacturing for physical releases, hence the bump up in price, but I do think it's a £30 game overall for the consoles. If you are tempted to get this game, I would honestly wait for it to drop in price or find a website that is offering it for a more reasonable cost. If you are a big fan of Terminator 1 and 2, then I do honestly think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. Being thrown into that environment and battling HKs and Terminators, it's hard not to be impressed and excited by those levels within the game. It's clear the development team are huge fans of the franchise, and the passion for the project is there in the final product. Yes, it has some issues, and it's not the most impressive looking game compared to say the latest FPS titles, for example but those games have far larger budgets and this does a suitable job of delivering a solid Terminator themed experience. It would have been great if it had a multiplayer option. Even just a horde type mode like in Gears of War, team up with a few friends and play as resistance soldiers and get attacked by waves of Terminators and face up against those giant machines for the boss battles. For me, it's probably one of the best Terminator games I've played in a long time, which isn't saying much as they have been mostly mediocre for years, but this one delivered the goods for me. If I had to give it a rating out of 5, I would happily award it 3.5 out of 5. Definitely recommended for hardcore fans of the Terminator series.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to see more retrospectives and commentaries. Also click on the bell to be notified of the latest reviews. If you want access to exclusive videos and to watch my content a few days before it's on YouTube, you can head on over to my Patreon. Thank you very much.